And today, let us uh, open up our heart and uh, let us welcome our dear uh, sister. She's our pastor from uh, Santa Mesa, Manila, Philippines. And uh, we know that God will uh, continue to speak and minister to every one of us. Amen? Are we ready? Let us welcome uh, Pastora Ed, Edna Medrano. Praise God as she delivered the word of the Lord. Praise God. Good morning, everyone. Uh, mabuhay from Manila. <laughs> thank you. Salamat po sa... Thank you, Pastor Mark, for the privilege of uh, uh, sharing the pulpit to me. And uh, I thank everyone for uh, welcoming me also the other week, uh, attending the summit, and now given the time to share with you the Word of God. But before that, I would like to... Uh, sing a song for the Lord and uh, may we all be blessed with this song. If you know the song, you can join me. Life can be so good Life can be so Thank you. 
Most of us have dreams. Amen. Most of us have great dreams. But God has greater dreams for us. And this is what God wants us to see. The vision and the dream that God has really prepared for each one of us. And this is the great life. We have been uh, hearing this from the past, from the summit. And this is the theme of the anniversary. It's about the holiness of God. When Isaiah had seen a vision about the holiness of God, the time then was in turmoil. It was the death, uh, the death of a king, a great king who ruled for 52 years. Imagine a king uh, who ruled for 52 years, he might have done great things. Actually, uh, the king then was deemed to be or seemed to be an engineer. He did great things, structures, in Israel, in Judah, great things until finally he died. And Isaiah was uh, depressed, Isaiah was discouraged, Isaiah was disappointed until finally he had seen a vision of God. That's why he said he heard the voice of the angel singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Amen. And do you know that what we see affects our hearts? Amen. What we see affects our hearts. That's why I like the, the line of the song that says there, I can see you, Lord. Do you see the Lord? Of course, we cannot see him with our bare eyes. We can see him with our spiritual eyes. And we can see and understand God on what he is doing in our lives. What he is doing around us using the heaven's eyes. Amen. But then, in the New Testament, this is still the very object, the very purpose of God in saving His people. That's why in my text that I've chosen in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 to 16, but just as He who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. This is in the New International Version. I took the different versions. It says here in the King James Version, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. In the New King James Version, it says there, But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. But like the Holy One who called you, Be holy yourselves also in all your behavior. Because it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. If God is holy, how do we define holiness? In our lives, in our time. Holiness, of course, theologically it says it is being separated, being uh, different. And God is separate. He is distinct. He is the epitome of God, of holiness. There is no standard of holiness. Although there are other gods around us, but there is only one God who is holy. Amen. There is only one God who is holy and this is the God of Israel. This is the God of our lives who have called us into holiness. God is a holy God. That's why in Leviticus chapter 11 verse 44, this is written in the Old Testament. God said, I am holy. I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am holy. God is saying this through Moses. And Moses had seen the holiness of God through all the articles that, had, that was prepared in the tabernacle first in the, in the, during the time of Moses. It was the tabernacle. And then finally, 
during the time of David, it was the temple. That's why those places were called the holy temple because it is where God dwells. It is the place where the holiness of God dwells or remains. So places where God's presence remains or God's presence stays are called holy places. That's why uh, during the time of Moses, during the time of David, the holy men of God in the Old Testament, they call the places where they worship as holy hill. It's Zion, the holy hill, or the holy mountain, because it is in those places where they meet God. So places where God, where we meet God, where God dwells and stays or remains are holy places. Amen. Because he is, he is a holy God. He is separate from us. But in this kind of holiness, God is calling his people into this kind, into this distinct picture of God. God is the only one who is holy. We can never be holy like God because we are human beings. We are created. But God is inviting us. He is calling us into the God kind of holiness that he can give to people, to human beings because he is also holy. He can never live with sin. That's it. That's why he said that do not make yourselves unclean by any creature that moves along the ground. That is in Leviticus 11.44. Because he cannot live with unclean things. We, he cannot stay with unclean things. That's why everything during the time of Moses, every article, everything that was placed in the tabernacle were made holy only for God's purpose. So how do we live? A great life that is called holiness why do we live a life of greatness that is called holiness because it is God's nature it is God's nature and he requires all of us to be holy that's why he said be holy it's a command it's not a request it's not a presumption it not, it's not an invite just an invitation but it is God's command it is God's requirement but not the kind of requirement that we think in our days in our contemporary times this is a requirement that also that requires us or shall I say uh, our choice because not God is not um, a tyrant he is not a God who obligates us all to do this it requires our choice, our will, our decision to be holy. God does not bend our elbows. Be holy, be holy. No, there is no fear or intimidation. But it is our choice for us to be holy depending on the holiness of God. It, he requires this for us to be holy because the one who called us is holy. His holiness is majestic according to Exodus chapter 15 verse 11. And in 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 2, there is no other God who is holy. That was Samuel saying that. Another thing that we, another reason why we need to be holy is because his expectation requires us to be holy. He is expecting us to be holy, to be to live a consecrated life. And living a consecrated life means living a separated life, a sanctified life according to His purpose. Of all of us are created by God. All human beings were created by God. And all people are being invited by God to, li to live in a God kind of life. But... Only people who decide to give their lives, only people who believe on God's plan, God's wonderful plan, only those who believe in God's methodology can live a holy life. There is only one way to a holy life. There is no other way. 
and that is the Jesus way. Amen. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Because there is no other way. Now, I'm, 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 I'm comparing this here. Um, I have heard that most of the people here in Hawaii are working, how many? Full-time, part-time, some are doing other works. Well, that's good if it pertains to work, if it pertains to your job, if it pertains to uh, gaining income. Amen? That's right. You can do that with your strength, with all wisdom, and with all favor. But in serving a God, you cannot have part-time. Amen. In serving our God, it cannot be part-time. It will always be exclusive. Amen. Amen. We cannot have, uh, I'm part-time today, it's Sunday, it's, I'm full-time. On Monday, it's part-time. No. It's always the whole of our life, everything in us. That's why it says here, uh, be, be holy in all you do. So whether you're at home, whether you're at work, you're in school, whether wherever you are, in your own car, in your own room, God is expecting us to live a consecrated life. Whether you are on, in church or wherever you are, God is expecting us to be holy in all. Say it all. In all we do. Even in our relationships. If we have husband or in our spouses, even with our children, with our parents, God is expecting us to live a holy, a consecrated life. For it is written, it says here, it be holy because I am holy. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, uh, chapter 1, verses 4 to 11, it says here, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy. This has been God's wonderful plan for us from the beginning. Even when we were not yet born, this is already God's plan. Until now, that we are older, God is still preparing us. God is still doing His work in us, in our lives. That we will live holy and blameless in His sight. Remember, in God's sight. Not, not only in the sight of men, but in the sight of God. He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. How are we saved? What is God's uh, way of saving us or in making us holy? If God requires us to be holy, to live a consecrated life, then what? is his method what are his ways what are his uh, steps what is his strategy we should know his strategy we should know his purpose why does he want us and how are we going to live a consecrated life you know we cannot do it alone God has already done it we only have to do the plan just like your building we have the replica here The plan has been done. The carpenters, the engineers, everyone doing that will just follow the plan. Amen. The same with us. Because God is holy and He is calling the believers, He is calling the born again believers to also be holy, He also has a plan for it. We need not think, how am I going to do it? We just have to follow the plan. We just have to do what has been done. The vision of being a holy child of God. So what is God's way of making us holy? First, He has done it by the power of the Holy Spirit. We cannot do it alone. We cannot even earn holiness. Even though how good we are, even if we give our lives as a sacrifice, as a living sacrifice, we can never be holy. God has done it first through the Holy Spirit. That's why we are called uh, born-again believers. We are not born on ourselves. 
It, it is through the Holy Spirit. That's why we are called born in the Spirit. Amen. It's an experience. We are born again in the Spirit. We cannot do it on ourselves. God had started it. God has done it. And we just have to move into what God has done for our lives. We are called to a holy life. Of course, we know that through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of the love of God our Father, He sent His only Son. So holiness, as I, uh, if I may quote uh, Pastor Dr. June, it's a Trinitarian work. It's a Trinitarian work. God has planned it. Jesus has done it. And we will continue on living in this kind of holy life in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why we need God into this process. We need to continue on living where we are called from darkness into this light that comes from God. We are made holy through the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why He died in order for us to live. And we are now living for our God. And in our lives, in our daily lives, we need to develop a pattern, of course. Just like a little child, a, a baby that has been born cannot live alone. Amen. He has to be fed. He has to be cleaned. He has to be brought to the doctor. He, has need, he needs to go out to get fresh air. And then the, uh, the baby be, um, becomes, uh, he, started, he starts to move and then uh, he begins to crawl, amen? He begins to walk. And then a time will come that there will be a winning time that he can do everything alone, amen? In our time, when we were born again, and we are called born-again believers, people, some people took care of us, amen? Fetching us, amen? Uh, inviting us and these people are praying for us but a winning time comes then they will no longer fetch you unless you're a senior citizen <laughs> unless you are uh, you need uh, some physical uh, <laughs> uh, assistance but if you can do it a winning time requires you to do it on your own you have to develop because you have you are trained to develop a pattern. You are trained to develop a routine. Amen. You are trained to brush your teeth. You are trained to, <laughs> what? To clean yourself alone. In the winning time, you have to do it alone. Amen. In the Christian life, because we are called to be holy, there is also a pattern, a routine that we must develop. And this is God's method of transformation this is God's way as I have said it is through the power of the Holy Spirit that's why we need to always pray because we cannot do it alone we ask God Lord help me to live a holy life I want to live a holy life we need to make it our purpose because that is God's highest purpose for our lives amen for us to be holy and it is exclusively for God God has done it for us through our Lord Jesus Christ by sacrificing His very own body. In 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, Paul talking or writing this letter to the Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be His holy people, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. That's why our routine as holy people, consecrated people, sanctified people, is that we always pray. Let us not forget. That's part of our pattern. That's God of our routine. A part of our routine as holy people. Amen. Tell your sitmate, you are holy. Made holy. Amen. We need to develop the discipline. And discipline is not an easy thing. Amen. 
It's not easy. In the army or in the military, did you, it, was it easy for those who are here who are in the Navy? Was it easy when you were starting? Where are you? <laughs> was it easy? No. You need to develop a discipline. You have to wake up early. You have to uh, beat your body. Amen? You have to beat your body. You have to uh, train yourself. Amen? To qualify. You need to live a healthy life. If you are serving, amen, in the military, if you are serving in the Navy, you have to live. There are many don'ts, amen, but there are many do's. For us Christians, sometimes we are more on the don'ts, aren't we? Then what are we going to do? Oh, bawal yan, masama yan. That's bad, that's bad. Smoking is bad, eating alcohol or drink, uh, this uh, eating uh, food with high cholesterol is bad. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, staying late at night is bad. All of these things we know are bad things, but what are good? What are the good things? What should we do then? You know, when we are training our children, we tell, that, we tell our children, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad. So the child is just looking at you, then what's, what's right? What's right? What should be done? And then the child runs again, climbs up and down, run. Then we, we tell our children, no, that's bad. Don't run, don't run, don't run. Then the child just looks at us. Then what's right? What should I do? I, I cannot climb. I cannot run. It's bad. It's wrong. Then what then should be done? The same in our Christian lives. We are called to be holy, but what needs to be, what should we do in the, it, to, not to earn, but that which is already bestowed upon us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Not that what we should not do, but to be trained in the things that we should do. And this is what we call discipline. Amen. You know what? Discipline nowadays, I think anywhere, discipline is a hard thing, isn't it? Because discipline, sometimes really, it ha you have to uh, follow step by step. And if you, just like in our studies, you have to discipline yourself. That's why there are many children now who have no good study habits because they were not disciplined to do it. Now, you know, discipline is not a bad thing. Discipline is doing the right thing. Amen. It's a positive thing. And what are these good and right things that we as holy people should do? Not to maintain our holiness, but for us to always be reminded that we are already holy. Amen. Do you believe you're holy? Amen? Again, ask your, your seatmate, the one sitting beside you, do you believe you are holy? <laughs> What's the answer? That is a question that requires an answer. It should begin from your heart and in your mind for you to live a holy life that you really believe that you, that you are holy. Amen? Amen? In the past, we are thinking that people who are holy are those who are called saints. And saints are already dead. Saint Peter is dead. Saint Paul is dead. But can I be called holy? Can you be called, I mean, a saint? If we are, if we will check the Bible, then we are, we are not yet dead, but we are called saints. Amen. We are saints because we belong to God who is holy. Amen. We are already separated from the world. We, God has already sanctified us from the world and delivered us from sin and shame and guilt and death. That's why we are holy. We are saints. Amen. That is the very foundation of our faith. That is the very foundation of our faith. That's why if we do that, if we believe in that, then we need to develop the discipline, the pattern of daily holiness. Can we be holy daily? Amen. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 10 to 11, 
They disciplined us. This is talking about our fathers. They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best. But God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in His holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at that time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. What are the necessary trainings that we should develop as born-again believers, as holy people? The Bible says in John 17, 17, Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. So what is the basis of our routine, our daily holiness? It's, it comes from the word of God. We cannot continue to live the holy life without the word of God. That's why we need to develop a Bible reading plan. We do not only hear the, the word of God on Sundays. We make a plan. It's a choice. Amen. We make a plan in order for us to grow spiritually, to grow in the understanding of our holiness. Amen. And to develop a daily pattern of holiness. Amen. The Bible is a very important part of our lives. We should not neglect reading, studying, meditating, the word of God. Here in this world, of course, uh, when I when we went to the site, the church site, they were talking about the aircon, they were talking about the electrical plan and everything. The, the plan. You know what? They opened the plan, the, 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 the drawing. And then they, when they were talking about the plan of the building, they 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 looked at the plan again, the drawing. Do you understand? For us to live a holy life, we do not end just by being born again believers. We do not stop just by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. We always look to the plan. We always look to the blueprint. Amen? We always go back to the manual. And that is the Bible. Amen? Amen? We always go back to the plan. Do not neglect. And the best part of this is practically, how do we do that? You make a Bible reading plan. Amen? You can go to, you can Google Bible Gateway and they will suggest a Bible reading plan. You can go, we are very highly technical. We can really make a plan. And it has to be uh, done. Not set aside plan. But we always look, go back, go back to the plan. What does the Bible say? What does God say? And then look at it. And as I said a while ago, what you see, what? Will affect your heart. What you see will affect your mind. If you always look at God, if you always look at His Word, if you always meditate, see and understand God's plan for your life found in the Bible, then... Your heart, your mind, your life will be changed. And it is called transformation. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yes, you can clap your hand to the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Remember who you are. Remember who you are. You are holy. Say it. I am holy. Believe it. Say it. I am a saint. Do you believe it? So say it. I am Saint Edna. What's your name? <laughs> Santa Teresa. He is the living Teresa, not the saints of old. <laughs> Santo Marcos. <laughs> Although there is a Saint Mark, the Apostle Mark, but we have a Santo Marcos here. Amen? Amen? Santo Buboy. Amen? Amen? We live up to who we are. Amen? Who are we? Who am I? You should know who we are because we live up to what we are. Amen? 
At Dr. Jun is a lawyer. And wherever he goes, even though he preaches the word of God, he always, his mind has been trained to be a lawyer. A, a critical mind, not a judgmental mind. <laughs> but a, a very critical mind because he was trained to be a lawyer. You know? So once you, wherever he is, he is called to be, before he was called Attorney June. But he, because he earned much degrees from, be, from being a lawyer to theology and everything, he's, we, just, we call him now as Dr. June. But who he is, he was before, he's still the same. If you're a doctor, when you are trained to be a doctor, your life has that pattern, even though you are a retired doctor. Amen? For us, born-again believers, we are called to be that. We are being trained to read the Bible. We are being trained to continuously pray and grow in this daily pattern of holiness. Then we will see. And what we see will really affect our lives. Amen. So keep on looking to Jesus. Let us keep on looking at Him. Following His word. Because he doesn't want unclean things. Unclean things. How do we know? What do we know what is unclean? You know what? The sad thing is that there are clear things in the Bible that are said to be unclean and unholy. But sometimes these unholy things, because people are defining unholy things and the holy things in a different manner sometimes even unholy things are made legally right you know what intellectual people because of their intellect which are not within the bounds of the word of God they are now doing it in or making it legal but that is not our basis alone. Our basis is, of course, the Word of God. Amen. That's why we need to continue on because knowing the Word of God makes us understand what holiness really means. Amen. Now, what is our motivation in living a holy life? Because we want to see Jesus. Amen. Because it says there, no one will see God without holiness. Amen? We cannot see God without holiness. Do you want to see Jesus? Do you want to see Jesus? Therefore, let it be our motivation to see our God. We want to see Jesus. I will live a holy life. Amen? And because of that, as I conclude, remember, He made us holy. We cannot earn holiness. God made us holy through the body of Christ. God continues to make us holy through the Holy Spirit. He wants us changed. And He already made, made it from darkness to light. So it is our choice. Let us make it our desire to live a holy life. Amen. And God is not yet through with us. He continues to transform us. Amen. Daily and continuously. So do not forget it. Let us be aware that God is not yet through with us. We could have that imputed righteousness, imputed holiness. God has made us holy, but we are still in the process of holiness. Amen. God is not yet through with us. Say it to your neighbor. God is moving in your life moving you into His holiness. Amen. Shall we clap our hands to the Lord? Amen. Thank you so much for the privilege once again from JRM Santa Mesa Mandaluyong. I would like to say thank you for your kindness and generosity to us, my husband and me for having us here in Hawaii. Thank you so much and God bless us all. May we rise up let us just sing one song to the Lord that says, Lord, you are so good to us. And in your kindness and holiness, I want to declare this. Hallelujah. That you are good. Lord, you are good. Your kindness leads me to 
and the power of the Spirit through your word and because of your love. Amen, Lord. Thank you. Bless your people in this place. Bless our hearts. Bless their lives. Bless, oh God, their desires, oh Lord, to be holy, to live a great life for your glory, a life that is pleasing to you, a life that is filled by your Spirit. Thank you, Lord. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.